Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time I wanted to talk about something that I've actually been working on for the last six months. And I thought that this was something interesting, something that's been brought up in previous videos from a host of different YouTubers and something that I wanted to try to explore myself. We are going to be talking about utilizing a bag, whether it be a like a fanny pack or the sling type bag or maybe a backpack for I guess what you could call off-body carry. Now this is a bit of a controversial subject for a lot of different people and for a lot of different reasons. We're going to touch on some of those and kind of touch on some of the experiences that I have looked at over these last six months utilizing this particular bag from Mission First Tactical. Now this is the 10 liter sling bag that they call the Acro that is a series of different packs. They sent this to me, full disclosure, but I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. I'm gonna talk about the good with the bad and explore all of that with you guys so you can make a decision on your own. Now, with that being said, this bag has been something that I wasn't quite sure what to do with. Naturally, it has a EDC compartment right here for me to use as a concealed carry platform for a pistol. But um, I got it and I'm like, well, it's, it's a huge bag. It's 10 liters, which doesn't sound like a lot. It doesn't look necessarily like it's a huge bag, but it can fit an awful lot of stuff inside of it. We'll talk about that as well. Before we get into this video, I need to ask you guys, what do you think about off-body carry? Is this something that you do on a regular basis? Something that you're interested in? Something you plan on doing? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Now, okay, let's do a bit of a once over on this particular bag. Uh, the first thing that I do like about this bag is the fact that it is somewhat uh, gray man type of a bag. It's not overly tactical uh, like you have seen with a lot of different backpacks and so on and so forth that it's got hook and loop all over the place. It's got molly all over the place and so on and so forth. It does have some laser etched molly on the front, but it's pretty subdued. And if I was to hand this over to a red pilled friend of mine, uh, they might see that and be like, ah, but those blue pilled individuals would just be like, okay, it's, it's a bag, I guess, whatever. So there is that. This does have four main compartments and then some zippers inside that compartment as well. We'll touch on that a little bit here in just a second, but the first experience that I had utilizing this kind of out in the field was actually taking my daughter to the Renaissance Festival. While I was there, uh, I took the three dogs out with us and uh, we had a great time. It was a great day. I actually got a compliment about this bag being uh, pretty useful and easy to get to and maneuver. Uh, as you can see, I can sling this back and forth pretty easy. It does, it's kind of squeaky right now, but it's not that big of a deal. But uh, while I was at the Renaissance Festival, I could flip it around and get to everything that I needed to get to. Now, naturally I was using, utilizing this as a supplemental to my EDC because I carry everywhere all the time and this just gives me one more avenue to carry everywhere all the time what did i carry while i was there well i this utilized this to carry my dog's water treats and a bowl there was more than enough room in this main compartment right here that allowed me to carry all of that in addition to my concealed carry pistol as well so i really did enjoy that aspect of it. But once I got done with the Renaissance Festival, I was like, where do I go from here? W what else can I utilize this on a daily basis that is going to prepare me for any type of situation that I might encounter? Well, that quickly presented itself on a drive back from Missouri as I was heading home. There was a traffic accident, a person uh, lost control of their vehicle, 
on an entrance ramp to the interstate and careened across three lanes of traffic hitting the median and I was the first person on the scene and I didn't really have any first aid equipment with me to properly render aid to any, any individual that was hurt. Now in that particular situation, no one was seriously hurt, no one was um, bleeding very badly or anything like that, but uh, it did kind of awaken me to the prospect that I may need to provide first aid. I may be the first person at the scene. So this year I have already enrolled in a medical class to make sure that I am as proficient as I possibly can, keep that proficiency up and running. And then also I have included an entire aid bag, an entire IFAC rather, in this bag to ensure that I have as much bandages and gauze and tourniquets and uh, scissors and everything that I feel that I might need to be a first responder in this bag and that is what this bag is meant for with me. Now it may differ for you guys. You guys may have a different need for a bag like this. This bag may be a 72 hour bag. There's more than enough room for you to put emergency blankets and an extra pair of um, gloves or a beanie and uh, some food rations uh, in here. That might be an option for you. For me, with the close proximity of places that I drive, I would use this for a first aid pouch primarily. So there is that. Let's dive into everything that I have inside this bag as it stands right now. First and foremost, we'll start all the way in the back of this compartment. I have a number of gauze that are meant for just bandages and uh, kind of allowing it to, uh, you know, be folded up and, and taped down for, you know, cuts and, and abrasions and stuff like that. That's the first thing. And then in addition to that, I have a large bandage, uh, emergency bandage. A lot of people will refer to these as uh, Israelis bandages. And this is essentially a large pressure dressing. I also have some tape in this large compartment as well and rolled up gauze as well to make sure that I can utilize it for pressure dressings or just as a uh, fluid stop or something to that effect. Moving up to the first right hand compartment, I have a emergency blanket, I have gloves, I have a little bracket for mouth to mouth breathing and then I also have a triangular bandage as well as small little finger bandages as well should I need to uh, render aid on a little boo-boo. From there I have a larger pressure dressing or trauma bag bandage as well so this is to supplement the Israeli bandage which is really nice and then in that same compartment I also have a tourniquet as well. This is going to be a straight up cat's tourniquet. So there is that right there. In the next compartment to the left of that, I have a simple steno pad with a pen. This pen was just given to me from the local heating and plumbing company. It has a light on the back, not very bright, but it is something easy to get to. And then I also have a um, Gerber multi-tool in that pouch as well. I also have another cat's tourniquet right there. And then on the outside, I have my Surefire G2X with Thrum uh, switchback, I believe is what they call that. So that it's easy for me to uh, get in and, and uh, pull out as I need to, as well as some medical shears as well. So that is the first aid pouch or the first aid kits that I'm utilizing. Here I have a lock picking set. Uh, this is a really inexpensive one from, uh, from Amazon and um, it came with some 
locks for me to practice on. I've been able to utilize this to break into <laughs> the um, camper that was left on my property in Wyoming and then also to uh, defeat a padlock as well uh, to get after some propane tanks. And then I also have a uh, covert in instruments lock picking set as well. So that is pretty nice. Now moving back to the next compartment, that is where you're going to find your concealed carry compartment. And that is going to be a loop on the inside. And then it also comes with a holster retention bracket. And this is something that I really, really do like. My holster slides right into here and clamps down with the ulti clip that is a part of this Wolf Hollow tactical for my P365 XL and the Swamp Fox Sentinel-2 that I have on here as well. So this is something that I really, really did like, and it ends up being extremely easy for me to get to. So if I'm out walking around or whatever the case may be and I need to get to my firearm, I can just get in there and get after it pretty quickly. So that was pretty cool, the way that they set this up. In addition to that, we have another bag or another compartment behind the concealed carry compartment that is divided, which is nice. And then there is also a bag way on the back. It is padded on both sides. So you could put like a tablet or something in there should you want to. So there is the Acro 10 liter sling bag that they sent out from Mission First Tactical. And I like this bag. I really, really do like this bag. Is it right for you? I don't know. Uh, your needs, wants, desires may be different than mine. And you might want something a little bit larger, maybe a little bit smaller, like a fanny pack or something like that. Now, let's talk about the things that you need to consider when utilizing this. We've already talked about the good things. Let's talk about the things that you will also need to consider, not only with this bag, but also when utilizing a off-body carry setup. First and foremost for this bag, I really do like how the shoulder strap is extremely padded. It's got some additional molly right here, so you can attach some type of like uh, pouch for your phone or something to that effect. But me wearing this Wooby hoodie that I have, I really do like this thing. Uh, this is a very slick material. So I do find that me walking around, this thing starts to slide and kind of becomes a bit of a messenger bag than it does something like a backpack. So uh, I would love to see Mission First Tactical to put some type of um, abrasive material on the inside, just kind of like a rubbery type of uh, material either glued on or sewed on to this pad that would kind of lock in on any type of clothing. That's the first thing. The next thing is these zippers. These are uh, pretty nice YKK zippers, I believe, and uh, that is your baseline for any type of pack or clothing that you wear, I suggest utilizing YKK zippers, but these pull handles I feel are a little underwhelming, especially for your concealed carry compartment. I would like to see this handle in particular be larger, uh, one that is going to be completely different than all of the other zippers. So you know exactly what you're grabbing for each and every single time so you're not distracted, right? So if I'm looking at what's going on in front of me and I need to get after my concealed carry, I'm not wondering, is this the outer compartment? Is the inner compartment? Which one is it? It's a large pull handle that I can get to real easy and get after my EDC. So there is that aspect of it. So that's specific to this bag. Now, when it comes to off-body carry as a whole, you have to understand that this is not something that you can do uh, kind of ad hoc or willy-nilly. You really need to pay attention to how you're going to carry and the concepts behind that carry. Here's a couple of different examples. Number one is if you're in a very crowded situation, if you're like on a subway or you're in a big crowd, uh, maybe you're at like an outdoor festival or something to that effect, like the Renaissance Fair that I went to, there's a lot of people around you, 
you can get distracted fairly easy talking to your friends or whatever the case may be. Someone behind you might be getting into your bag and you don't even know it. So one of the things that you'll need to do is just throw it over in the front and just kind of hang out, you know? If there's a lot of people around you, just put it in front of you and hang out. You don't have to worry about it. You have positive control of it. No one's gonna get inside of it. That's number one. Number two, if you're gonna utilize this as your primary EDC device, if you go to, let's say, a restaurant, this now becomes a sensitive item. For someone like myself who's been in the military and understands the concept of sensitive items, that means that this will never be any further than one arm length away from me at any point in time. So if I'm at a restaurant, this is not getting slung over the back of my chair. Uh, have I done that? Yes. Uh, but I have made sure that if I do that, no one's getting behind me. I'm against the wall or something to that effect. However, if you are sitting like at a bar, uh, at a cafe or something like that, people walking behind you, you know, to get to their seat or get to the front door, you don't want to sling it over the uh, back of your chair. You want to either have it in your lap or at your feet so that it's kind of like looped around your uh, leg or something to that effect. If you get up and go use the restroom, this is coming with you. It doesn't matter if you're with your husband, your wife, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, your best friend, it doesn't matter. If you're getting up to leave, this is coming with you, especially if you have your um, pistol secured in here as your primary carry. In addition to that, if you're out and about walking around and you get into a confrontation, it doesn't have to be a physical confrontation. Let's say you get into an argument with someone and you have to, you know, kind of keep somebody away what are you doing with your bag? Are you taking it off and handing it off to someone? Is it going to be behind you? Is it going to be in front of you? How are you going to defend yourself without your firearm with this bag on? That's something else that you're going to need to consider as well. So a number of different variables that you'll need to keep in mind each and every single time that you use a bag like this out and about if you are not carrying around uh, your waist, regardless if that's appendix or three o'clock, four o'clock, doesn't matter. But if you're not carrying on your person and you're utilizing this bag as your concealed carry uh, setup, then those are different things that you're gonna need to consider. So there is kind of my spiel on the prepared citizen, I guess. We're gonna do a number of these videos uh, moving forward, not only when it comes to off-body carry, I'll look at some other bags as well and try those out over a period of time. But also going to look at uh, my truck setup, regardless if that is how I position my firearms in my truck if I'm traveling or if I'm just, uh, just kind of traveling back and forth between uh, work and home, the things that I have inside my truck as well. I'll be doing a couple of different videos on that as well because I really want to dive into the concept of a prepared citizen more so than just a review of this rifle or this pistol and just kind of providing data points on that. I want to give you something more to consider while you're out living your life and doing the best you can. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by. I surely do appreciate it. If you haven't already checked out the Live, Laugh, Lark podcast, I'd really encourage you guys to do so. And uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. We've got some guests lined up for the rest of this year, and I'm excited to get them on board as well. With all of that being said, thanks a lot. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you guys later. As always, freedom through strength becomes a high five. Bye, y'all.